And on today's show, how target marketing can hit the bullseye for your business. Part five of this week's online social media marketing with nationally recognized financial social media marketer, Amy McElwee. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial economist and contributing author to Peckham Technician. Let's get down to business. Well, Amy, day five, welcome to the show. Thank you. We're gonna pull it all together, talk a little about this. When, and I'm not saying that everybody has to drink my Kool-Aid, but we talk about fitting social media into a marketing strategy. It has become my marketing strategy. I hate to say it, I feel bad. I feel like I'm kind of myopic in my approach here, but I kind of went this way uh, three years ago and it ser has served me well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to say it is the marketing strategy and you don't need anything else, but or if for what I do, it's kind of served me. It's the major part. Now, when you talk about introducing this into your practice, am I talking about, hey, this is a 10%, you need to vote how much time? What To make this strategy work for you, what am I looking at? Well, social media, it's not a pillar on its own. Where you said it's become your marketing mm -hmm. strategy, your marketing strategy is really content marketing. And with social media, you're using social media in content marketing it's to get that message out there. So you're creating great content, your blogs, your TV shows, everything, all of your status updates, and you're using tools like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube to distribute that content. So that's how you really wanna look mm -hmm. at social media. It's not a pillar of marketing on its own. What it's going to do is amplify your message mm -hmm. to reach a much larger audience. I like amplification. When I think about this, I'm looking at these three basic issues. I'm marketing at an event, uh, I've just been, I've been at several events lately. I've been on the road and heading again out this week. I'm looking at marketing event. How big is that? Because are people like tweeting during the event? Are they Facebook pay, uh, putting pictures on their Facebook page of the conferences they're at? I know you do that a lot. Do you mm -hmm. see advisors picking up on this? We are. I'm seeing the advisors being very active in participating in these groups and the discussions at these live events. So it depends on what type of conference you're at if whether or not the hashtag is going to be very popular or the level of communication that's interacting. If you're at South by Southwest in Austin, for example, it's going to be causing hashtag trends on Twitter because everybody is communicating. And on the B2B space, I'm seeing more and more uh, broker dealers, IMOs, uh, RIAs connecting with the individual advisors through Twitter, through hashtags. So it mm -hmm. can be a huge part of your marketing uh, strategy. But what I wanted to talk about here though, Steve, is actually, you know, if you were to have an event and how you can market it. So not just the conversations that are happening at the events, but if you're actually having an event, a seminar, how do you market that? And this is before media? the event. This is before the event. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk me through, walk me through this because I want the media exposure. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to market my event properly, but now we're talking a little bit of proactive before the event occurs. Exactly. So say you're trying to drive traffic to your event. Um, traditional media, you might be doing some advertising on TV, on in newspaper ads, direct mail pieces. Uh, with social media and online marketing, you can use this to enhance those efforts. So say, for example, you're having a golf outing. You can actually strategically um, search for people in your local area that list in their LinkedIn profile that they like golf and target them mm -hmm. and invite them to your event. You can do a radius search on Twitter, searching for people within a 10 mile radius of Phoenix that mention in their profile that they like golf, invite them to your event. So you can really strategic market and target. Set up a Facebook event. Uh, one of our, there's a financial advisor in Denver. He does um, Money Matters every Tuesday. They meet for happy hour and they talk about money and he has a Facebook event. And the beauty of that is anytime somebody joins that event, it alerts all of their friends. So it creates this viral aspect. So if I have a single user Facebook person, he just got the invitation. Mm -hmm and he responds in any way, yep. that's going out to everybody that he's connected to. Exactly. Now how many, this could be, I mean, this seems like multi-layering marketing. I mean, you know, you're mm -hmm. affecting one person who has a rather large following or a large participation in Facebook. That's going to leverage whatever you're talking about out there. When you use the word amplification, I don't think we see that as big as that word is. Maybe I need a bigger or a better superlative. <laughs> you know, what's the bigger, better superlative there? I mean, it has amplified my uh, one real, what I would use as a great example is we did a show and we did it on a specific subject. Mm -hmm. And I've always advertised the same way, except for that show was so popular that we had almost 12,000 total page views on it. Mm -hmm. So I made that the advertisement for the mailer. So I just Perfect. said 12,000 C and then I said, go out and watch the show. If you like it, come to the event. It was the first time in the history of my 30 year career where we actually not only sold out the event, 
we sold out three events. We had to make three events, mm -hmm. and the mailer was a very limited 1,500 mailer. So when I have 100 people coming off a 1,500 mailer, and I was able to quantify that by pushing them to YouTube to watch the show to see mm -hmm. if they liked it, if you liked it, come. That surprised me. But what was the surprising was how everybody said, why did you even look at this? Because you said you had 12,000 page views on this. See, and what you bring up such a great point is people are just conditioned to look at these two as complete separate worlds, but you can't do that anymore. It's about how they work together to reach the goal, how the online and the mm. offline are coming together, driving traffic to that event, and the, adding the credibility and the viewership to, again, get that attendance. We come back, I want to talk a little bit about, because um, you mentioned about lead generation off of LinkedIn. I loved all that. I'm going to show you a little example here that I think you're going to find really fascinating for your practice. We'll be right back in about 30 seconds. Back in the day, life insurance professionals were called field underwriters. Then, carriers trained their field force in the basics of life insurance underwriting. Today, the insurance industry doesn't educate the agent population as they once did. But now, you can have the informed risk guide at your fingertips so you can illustrate a reasonable rate class for your life insurance prospects. Just request your copy of the informed risk guide at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. It's free from Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, Amy, we're back again, and I'm looking at this uh, this one site. What's going on here? What, what to why is this so important, and why is this really good advertising? Yeah, this is what I wanted to show an example. So, say for example, you're having a golf event mm -hmm. up here on the top. You can see I searched for golf Atlanta, and this brings up over almost thirteen thousand people in the Atlanta area that mention as a hobby they like to golf. So, you can invite these people to your golf outing or event. And you can get them to, and you can actually pre-screen them based on their LinkedIn profile, send them in messages, personally inviting them. If you want to break it down by industry, you can see how many are in various industries. Maybe you want to target IT people. There's 792 people that are IT that lists they like oh, is that golf. people or groups? People. These are individuals. Okay, so, so how much money is it costing me to get to these people? All it costs is your time. So if you understand... You know, I'm wondering if there's a basic boot camp of how do I use LinkedIn? Do you guys provide that kind of a service? We absolutely do. I'm thinking entry level, do you got a kindergarten one? Because mm -hmm. I remember when I first met you, I was like, I had to go down to the kindergarten level. We have our financial social media university, and we actually have a, um, a coaching program. Well, we'll work with you over a course of three months, help coach you and train you on these various techniques on how to prospect through LinkedIn. In fact, one of our clients was able to see the double his referrals within six months by applying this one basic strategy, mm -hmm. which let me tell you here real quick, is very simple. You go in and start connecting with your current clients. So start there. So he connects with all of his current clients and now every time they come in for an appointment, he goes into their LinkedIn connections and he identifies other people he would like to meet. So after their appointment, he mentions to them, Oh, you know, we're connected to Brian Smith and Sharon Mathers, and I think that I might be able to help them because they're also teachers or whatever the connection may be. Would you mind making an introduction? And by asking for that introduction, again, rather than a referral, saying how you know them through LinkedIn, he actually gets people picking up the phone while in his office and calling them to introduce them. Off, their, off LinkedIn? Off of LinkedIn. Wow, that, I'm sorry, that's really outside my conventionality. I like the idea. When I... When I'm looking at this, and this is a, of course, golf is huge, so the numbers mm -hmm. here. I'm looking at, you know, when we're online, we're really talking about the law of large numbers, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's where the numbers come from. When we see people coming to our uh, seminar and we get a really good attendance, yeah, but look at how many people were out there that got this. I love the economy of scale. Now, this next slide, I have to say, I've had Brittany on my show. This is really unique because she only focuses on women. Mm -hmm. And she's got a whole little book out there that she made. And she, I think, I, I'm not really sure I'm right about it, I'm pretty sure she was the youngest CFP ever in California. And she's in a huge broker dealer that not only lets her do this, which is surprising, but when she came on our show, they completely were okay with how we were talking about things. It was really great. Talk a little bit about this slide. Brittany is doing great. She's doing phenomenal things, pushing the envelope forward in social media. I actually uh, mention her in my book and call her, she's the social butterfly. And this slide, for example, she's marketing her, her webinar. It's a live webinar about women in financial mm -hmm. services. 
Uh, so Brittany does a lot of these trainings, again, specifically targeted w targeting women. She's very active on all the social channels, and one in particular is uh, Instagram, again, because the, the female following. If you're a female advisor, I highly recommend you to go out to her site. She's doing, in my view, credible things, and again, under 30. Wow. I want to talk a little bit about um, media exposure. Now, you pull this out of here. I want to say, why is this slide, why is this example a pretty good example of media exposure? And this is something that we were just doing, Steve, you know, taking pictures behind the scenes mm -hmm. and sending out, I'm going to be on Steve's show. Here's me at Steve's show. Here's mm -hmm. me after. You want to market, take advantage of all of the opportunities. Market before you're getting on the news. Jamie Cox here. Uh, join me on Fox Business tonight. So he's letting people know that he's going to be on Fox Business. Uh, Jean Anderell here, after she's been on the, the news in Orlando, she's talking about, uh, check, check out the video online. I've, I was just on the news. So it adds that credibility. You, mm -hmm. Again, you want to make sure that you're fully amplifing your message so, of PR. So I know you've been, on, you've been on Fox News, MSNBC. I mean, you've been on a lot of major networks. So people are looking to you. I, I want to talk to you, Bill, before we get into the strategic connections, because I want to get it. I want to be a I want to be connected in strategies and connections. But I'm always thinking to myself, you are not just social media, but you're more specific to financial social media. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about why you went to this more narrowing niche in your area of social media. Well, there's a lot of compliance and regulatory issues surrounding social media in this space. So uh, I've been in digital marketing for over 15 years. In the past 10, I've been working in the insurance and financial space, particularly in the independent channel. So really understanding the need. And then also a lot of our clients that we work with are, are typically older, 45 to 65 year old men. And I look at my dad who mm -hmm. owns his own business and I know that he struggles a little bit with the technology side of things. So I saw a huge need in the market and looking to just truly help these independent business owners grow their practice. Uh, through social media. Well, I think you've really niched and niched, uh, have a huge niche market. Why is this quote by Warren Buffett so big for you? This is one of my favorite quotes to end on. You know, the uh, our, or the in a chronically leaking boat, energy devoted to changing vessels is more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. And the bottom line, what worked 10 years ago, it doesn't work anymore. And you can keep throwing money at it, trying to fix the leaks but it's not going to work. It's time to change vessels, and that new vessel is technology. So the choice is up to you, whether you choose to change ships or sink with the ship. Well, I don't want to rehab old technology when I can get brand new ideas that are now actually proven. This isn't an experiment anymore. Nope. We're out there proving it. Well, that's our show for this week. I hope you enjoyed our time with Amy. It really helped us out. Remember, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, or your broker-dealer compliance officer. And don't forget, you can watch all our past episodes at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an Ash Brokerage advisor. We'll see you next week.